welcome back you tank enthusiasts you it's me matt i appreciate you stopping by on today's video we're discussing tank protection today yes that of the old school configuration of the t64 now tank armor for the russians has been quite unique through its history there's been a lot of different crazy adaptations whether it be spaced armor caged armor uh, a pleak modular whatever it may be there's been all sorts of changes but one piece of armor that i've been questioned about a number of times is Matt, what are those panels sticking off the side of a tank? What are they doing? Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about exactly what they're for and why they're there. And I'm sure many of you probably already know the answer, but it's always nice to do a little bit more of a deep dive into how they came to be. Now, side panels of tanks is nothing new. It's been around for quite some time, whether it be uh, prevention of dust when going along long distance tracks or whatever else it may be, because dust obviously creates the ability for a armored column or a tank to be seen, or for the specific requirements to protect the vehicle from projectiles hitting the tank. Now, the side panels that we're looking at today have been given many different names. Most of the time when you talk about armor of this kind, it's known as gill armor or skirt armor, like the gills of a fish, obviously protruding off the side of the vehicle with slits. However, they're not actually the true name of this armor. And in the research that I found, which has been very, very limited in finding information for, now, from what I've researched and what I can find, the actual name of this armor is the ZEHT-1 Zontic, which is a protective screen style armor and originally designated as the Aloshka, or known as Christmas Tree, flip-out form of spaced armor. Yes, the gill armor that we've been so prominent in seeing on the T-64 and even T-72s in some configurations is designed to protect against high-explosive anti-tank weapons to prevent them from detonating against the side of the vehicle. Now, if you know anything about high-explosive anti-tank, you obviously know that the actual space between armor is quite important because in sacrificial armor packages it's designed to be hit by a shape charge round in the hopes that it would detonate the projectile early now in theory it's supposed to work in dispersing of this kind of projectile and hitting the skirt it should lose most of its momentum and armor penetration value that by the time it actually hit the tank's armor it wouldn't actually pierce through and this concept took its roots from the spaced armor that was used in world war ii in use against anti-tank rifles and very early heat rounds which were very primitive but of course armor is adapted and so have the weapon systems that have come to attack that armor and these side skirts although very very primitive very simple do provide a very minuscule amount of i guess insurance to high explosive anti-tank rounds coming in at roughly 45 degrees now you're probably wondering mad if there's a round coming head on this is going to do nothing for this vehicle it's just going to splash the molten metal all over the place and yes it's really designed for projectiles coming in at angles i.e 45 degrees the uh, presentation of the front of the armor to the tank and it really makes the tank look bigger too it almost reminds you of the dinosaur from uh, jurassic park where it's spitting acid into that fat man's face with the uh, you know glasses and he gets you know what i'm going at so key to this armor's effectiveness is actually the tank driver and commander utilizing the capability of the 45 degrees which is why you know you talk about it in video games such as war thunder everybody says oh put your vehicle at 45 degrees or angles make sure you work on your angles and this is what that's there for okay is to prevent those rounds coming in at a particular angle towards the front 90 degrees of the tank if you notice there's only three panels on the t64 they're not placed upon all the back end because you go beyond the reasonable arc that you would have for the rounds to come in towards uh, the i guess zone of protection that you're looking for for the tank now as you can probably guess the gill armor or the christmas tree style armor that we're talking about today didn't really develop or adapt further into its use and the fact of the matter is that it was very fragile you've got to remember that once you put heavy panels like that alongside tracks of running gear of a tank it really is very susceptible to being destroyed not by armored piercing rounds but from mud debris rocks dust etc etc also the crews did not like them from the research that i've been finding they were very difficult to deploy and even when they did deploy the spring-loaded levers that actually kept them in place failed quite often they would catch on trees bushes or whatever else was in the way the other concern that the crews had with these panels is that once they fell off, they left a piece of the vehicle behind that could be tracked by other armored battle groups. You don't really want to be leaving pieces of spaced or even any type of armor package left around because it's trackable by the battle groups that may be advancing or following you or whatever else. So when the crews actually had them, most of them just took them off because they were just a pain in the butt. 
Now the vehicle did have the ability to deploy these internally, which means you could pull a lever, it would spring load these panels out and flop them out so the crew wouldn't have to get out and pull them out. But as I said, the crews were finding that that just didn't work, it was just not designed very well. Another thing to consider with the Gill or Christmas tree style armour is that it was not applied to the turret and therefore most of the Cold War conflicts that were actually designated for these tanks to be used in, such as the T-64, were in hull down positions anyway. Therefore it reinforced the crew's scepticism of why on earth are we playing around with these stupid annoying mechanically failing panels when we're dug into a trench or hiding behind a berm anyway. The turret if anything needed this kind of application of different types of armour. One of the other notable research points that I found out was a disadvantage of this type of armour was that the dust was not only created more in these panel configurations, but it was channeling it up into the sighting arcs for the turret for the gunner. So as he's driving along with these panels deployed, the dust that's being pulled up from the running gear is actually being funneled towards the sighting of the gunner where he needs to see and therefore once again becoming more and more redundant. Now believe it or not, the T-64 was not the only main battle tank of Russian design that actually utilized these panels for a very short period of time. Some T-72s were also retrofitted with this type of armor package, but because of its capability of being absolutely useless, uh, they just removed them once again anyway, and that's why you saw them very slowly phased out from the T-64 designs all the way up to the modern main battle tanks of today. The irony is though, is that modern add-on armour, so to speak, has adapted quite heavily away from the actually hitting something to the active protection system style add-on armour that is actually firing projectiles back at the incoming projectile, stopping it from even hitting something like the gill or side skirt armour that we're looking at today. So I hope you learned a little bit about this strange, peculiar, but almost pointless armour protection package for main battle tanks of Russia back in the day. I really appreciate you stopping by on my channel today. If you want to support my channel, please go check out my Patreon and my PayPal. And I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting me on my channel. It really does mean the world to me. If you want to be notified of any upcoming content in the future, click the little bell by the subscribe button so you can be notified for next time. Have a wonderful day. Take it easy. Bye-bye.